Stand Neil Now What, Season 2, Episode 28, Steubenville, Part 2. Hi, my name is Karen. I like to say that I'm the good kind of Karen. I am first and foremost a daughter of God, a wife, mom of two, and I recently came home to the Catholic Church. I love my faith so deeply that I want others to love it too. Whether you are a cradle Catholic, Catholic curious, or you have come home to the Catholic Church as an adult like I have, Stand, Kneel, Now What is the show for you. Through my love and lots of blunders, my goal is to help you along your faith journey. Our paths may be different, but all of our roads need to lead home so that we can be with our Father. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Stand, Kneel, Now What? I'm your host, Karen Estep, and I am hopeful (laughs) that this episode actually records right now. Last week, I just had some snafus with the mic, not working with the computer, and I thought I had recorded this episode twice, and in fact, it didn't record anything. (laughs) So hopefully, third time is a charm. That being said, this is going to be about Steubenville day two, and I had a really beautiful litany of femininity ready to go. However, it is a very long litany. I will try to see if I can link it in the show notes. Sister Caroline, who was the nun that spoke at our Steubenville conference, wrote this litany about the difference between being a girl and a woman. And it is beautiful. It is a beautiful, beautiful read. And it really touched me. However, (laughs) it is a very long to read litany. So we're going to go with a shorter prayer that actually goes along with what I want to talk about tonight. So here we go. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. That is from 1 Samuel 3, 9. And once I get into today's topic, that will make a lot more sense. So Steubenville day two, I'm coming off of Steubenville night one where I did not like it at all. I was ready to leave after night one and not (laughs) not look back. And if you don't want to go back and listen to the episode, here's a quick little recap Steubenville night one is set up a lot like a Protestant praise and worship service, which is something that I have no intention of going back to unless I'm, you know, visiting a French church for their children to be baptized. But I was not expecting that to come from a Catholic service, if that makes sense. And so while it was good, it was very confusing. And I think that's okay. You know, I went to one of the other chaperones who was also a Catholic convert, and we just kind of had a discussion about it, and it was fine. Let's talk about day two. All right, so what they do is you have mass first, and then they split the groups up. So they have a girl group and a boy group, and the girls went and listened to a talk from Sister Caroline. It was beautiful. It was about how we should be more like Mary and less like Eve and how we can do that and how we can embrace our feminine genius. Then the girls go to lunch. And while I was at lunch, I did small group with my girls. And then the boys go and listen to the priest talk about something similar, but from a male perspective. And so You know, it's just a really good time to kind of connect with the girls that were in my group. We talked about what the feminine genius looks like. Some of them were very convinced that femininity meant something bad. And so we just had this really good talk about how being in touch with our feminine genius, which is a gift from God, is not a bad thing, you know, and that God made men and women equal, but gave us both really great qualities that are completely different, but completely complementary. And I don't know if they had heard that before. So I was glad I got that opportunity to talk with them. Then 
there's this huge, massive block party that they throw at Steubenville. And as much as I love dancing and I don't mind if people are embarrassed for me, like I'll dance anywhere. I danced at Trader Joe's yesterday. (laughs) I did a dance break in the aisle where I was picking up some black beans for tacos later this week. Like I have no qualms about dancing in front of other people. However, I, you know, tried to play it low key and got a churro instead and then just went and talked to one of the other chaperones. (laughs) So nobody was super embarrassed by my, I have no dancing skills, but I don't care. You know, when the rhythm's good, you just get into it and you dance. So anyway, later on after the block party, before you go into the speaker for the night, we had a small group and I was just talking with them and we were talking about different things in the Catholic church and different things about the church that I grew up in. And one of the girls looked at me and she said, man, you sure do know a lot about the Catholic church. And I went, yeah, yeah, I do. And I was really, really proud of myself. And I was proud that she could see how knowledgeable I was. And it was one of those things that she just kind of looked at me. She's like, how, how did you learn so much? Well, I, and you know, I told her that I had gone through the RCIA process and that I had also done a lot of my own reading. I had, you know, listed a couple of the books that I had read and I had studied some different blogs and, you know, and she was like, man, that's just way cool because I've been Catholic my whole life and I don't know as much as you. And I, you know what? In that moment, I was incredibly proud of myself, (laughs) which um, after that, God was going to humble me and in the way I needed it. You know, I was ready to listen to God and in listening to God, I had to be taken down a few notches. So after that, you go to another talk. I think that time it was the priest that gave a talk. Then you go to dinner and you prepare yourself for adoration. So by preparing ourselves for adoration, we talked about the different ways that people respond to adoration. Now, for my non-Catholic listeners, adoration can be done in a couple of different ways. Typically, what you will see is a small chapel in your parish that is off to the side, and that is the adoration chapel. Now, some parishes have perpetual adoration, which means that someone is in adoration 24 seven and they have sign up lists for that. And it's beautiful. The church that I go to currently only has three days worth of adoration. When you do it that way, it is silent adoration. It is no worship band. No, like it's not this massive experience with 5,000 other people. In those silent adorations, though, a lot of fruit can happen and you can do a multitude of things. You can read quietly. You can listen to a podcast quietly. You can pray. Obviously, you should be there to pray. (laughs) I have read books in adoration. Um, Typically, when I take my chuckleheads, we just sit and pray for about 10 minutes and then leave. It's beautiful. A lot of fruit, spiritual fruit, comes from going to adoration. So I I highly recommend going to silent adoration. However, when you go to these big, especially the youth conferences, adoration is done a little differently. They typically have a worship band that will be singing praise and worship songs while you are in adoration. Sometimes there's what we call the bells and smells. There's no bells, but there were definitely, there was lots of incense And this time the monstrance was, um, the monstrance was paraded. I don't, that's not the right word. However, the priest walked with the monstrance around the stadium with the incense and it was beautiful. And the priest goes to each and every section in the stadium. So we're talking about an adoration that lasts for about an hour you're on your knees the whole time. You're kneeling the whole time. And it was amazing and beautiful. And I have never been so jealous of a hallway as I was during this time of adoration. 
I just wanted to go out in the hallway and be with Jesus by myself. (laughs) I even was one of the people that was like, you know, I could pretend to go to the bathroom and then just run down the hallway to the, you know, before the priest gets to the next section. And I thought about it. I really did. I did not. Uh, However, just, just the thought of the priest with the monstrance in the quieter hallway and being there, it I, it made me jealous. I, I'm not going to lie. I really wanted to be the hallway at that point. I wanted to be in that quiet space too. Anyway, the main part of what I got from adoration that time. And so anytime I go into adoration, whether it's silent or in one of these big conferences, I take a moment and I pray and I pray that you know, God can really tell me something that I really focus in and listen to what God is telling me. So during this time of adoration at Steubenville, I, I had this imagery of giving Jesus my heart and my heart is broken because I'm human (laughs) And it is full of disappointments and, you know, me not being where I want to be, me not doing what God wants to do, me doing things that are sinful, like all of these things. This is, my, this is all part of my heart. And I hand my broken heart over to Jesus. And Jesus is collecting every single little piece and placing it into my kaleidoscope. And it broke me to have that image of what was going on because my word for the year for 2024 was kaleidoscope because I thought it meant that I needed to see God using the broken bits from other people to shine his light. I had no idea that God was going to use that word for me, that God wants me to use my broken bits too, to create a kaleidoscope, to shine his beauty and his light. And I lost it. (laughs) I lost it. And I just, what a beautiful reminder that the things that we want to see in other people are also the things that we need to see in ourselves. And when we see other people shining God's light, even despite their broken pieces, that God's doing the same thing for us. Another thing that happened after this image was I clearly heard the words, follow me. And when I say that that left me very confused, (laughs) That is putting it mildly because here I was, you know, three and a half years into this journey into Catholicism, journey into what I thought God was calling me to, doing all the things, reading all the things, trying to learn Latin, trying to learn as much about church history and learn as much about the saints and learn as much about Mary as I could, all of this stuff. And I just kind of went into prayer after I heard follow me and went, what, what have I been doing? If I haven't been following you, please tell me what I've been doing. And I left adoration exhausted because it was emotional in the best way possible and confused, not in the best way possible. And yet I had to buck it up, buttercup, and go and lead the youth in a last minute come together before the night ended. And we're talking like this night lasted until 1130. (laughs) They keep you up late at Steubenville. So it is 1130 and I'm climbing into bed and I'm just exhausted. I've cried. I've laughed. I've come to Jesus literally. And I'm just so confused by his words, follow me. And going to bed, exhausted, chewing on that. And and I just, I wake up the next morning and 
like, oh, now we have to go to mass. <laughs> but at least after mass, I get to go home to my family. But now we have to go to mass. And oh, gosh, did I need that mass though? So the next day, Sunday, you end Sunday by going to mass. And then they send you forth and they send you forth to your home parishes to be stewards of Christ's light. And I got the answer to follow me. And I got the answer to my prayers of what have I been doing if I haven't been following you at mass. So mass comes around. It's beautiful. The bishop gives a homily. And in the bishop's homily, he said these words. You can know a lot about Jesus and not know Jesus. And I lost it because that's what Jesus has called me to the night before. Because you see, I I have all this head knowledge. I have all of these information and facts and all of this stuff about the Catholic church and, and different saints and and how it, and what it all means and how it's different than, how it's different than being a protestant and all of this stuff i have i have head knowledge but what i was lacking and what i had let slip through the cracks is my heart knowledge and my relationship with jesus and and man when god humbles you like that, like that is enough to go, all right, so where do we go? Where do I go? How do I follow you, Lord? What is it I need to do? And in God's providence and in God's timing, right before I had gone to Steubenville, I had signed up to do a book review for Catholic Mom, Dr. Edward Treed's new book, titled, What Do You Seek? And in this book, it's all about how can we evangelize to people about Christ's love when we don't have a relationship with Christ. And it was beautiful. And I needed to be broken that way. (laughs) And actually, my favorite chapter in the entire book was a chapter entitled, Follow Me. Guys, I can't make this up. I actually didn't get the book until I came home from Steubenville. And I hope that you understand that through all of this, I think God also wants me to share it with you. Because we can be very, very knowledgeable in our different faith backgrounds. You can know all there is to know about Calvinism and Methodist and, you know, whatever your denomination is. But when we fail to have a relationship with Jesus, what good is all of that head knowledge? We need to have the heart knowledge too. And we can only have that heart knowledge by continuing to have a relationship with Jesus by continuing to seek him, by continuing to follow him. And I think it's really important to say all of that because I needed to hear it. And if you need to hear it too, I hope this reaches you because Jesus is always, always, always going to seek us out. We just need to listen. And to continue that relationship with him day after day. And man, as much as I didn't want to hear the words that he said to me, (laughs) Steubenville day two and a half, I needed them. I needed them so that I could be a better steward of my faith. I needed them so that I could be a better mom, a better wife. And I needed them so that I could be a better follower of Jesus because he wants me to follow him. He wants you to follow him. And so we need to get our heart knowledge 
and our relationship together with our head knowledge. But first we got to work on the heart. So that was Steubenville day two and a half. And there was so many good things and so many good experiences. And if you get a chance to go to a Steubenville conference, whether you're a chaperone or you go to one of the adult conferences, take the opportunity, run with it, go with it. It's amazing. And I hope you have a blessed, great time. And even though day one was really hard, (laughs) night one was really hard, I'm so glad I stuck with it because God knew what I needed to hear, whether I wanted to hear it or not. So hopefully you'll get a chance to do that as well someday. All right, let's get into some odd one out results from a couple weeks ago. Your choices were number two pencils, which side note, they need to be Ticonderoga or they're not worth anything. A mechanical pencil or a pen. And number two pencils came in at 30%. Mechanical pencils came in at 30%. And then the pen was the winner. The pen is mightier than the sword at 40%. I would also choose pen in this situation because it's the only one that has ink. My husband said that the number two pencil would be his choice because you can't click it like you can click the other two, I guess. (laughs) You don't always have to click a pen, but that's where he was going with that. Like you click a mechanical pencil and you click a pen. All right. In honor of Starbucks releasing their fall drinks. We are going to do odd one out fall drink challenge. So your choices are pumpkin spice, little sidebar on this one as well. It can be any of the pumpkin spice choices, pumpkin spice latte. I like the pumpkin spice cold foam, cold brew thing they have. I literally just go in and look at like what's on the poster and go, I I want a tall version of one of those. (laughs) Apple cider or chai. Now I know before I get this, I understand that chai is not inherently a fall drink. However, however, the spices in chai always make me think of fall. No matter what time of year I have it. I've had chai in the spring. However, I think of fall. So One more time, pumpkin spice, whatever, choose your pumpkin spice drink of choice, apple cider or chai. All right. I want to tell everybody something too, before I end the episode next week, I am contemplating getting into a more controversial topic because I feel like with the political climate, I need to discuss how my opinions changed on some things coming into the Catholic faith. So if this is an episode next week that you would like to skip, I understand that. I also want to make it very clear that just because we disagree on something doesn't mean that we can be hateful towards each other. And I have had to take a step back several times on things that I have posted online that were uncharitable. And I think that's what we need to be as grownups. Even if you are not a Christian, (laughs) we can learn something about charitably speaking to each other and also agreeing to disagree. And there are good ways to do that. And there are bad ways to do that. So Next week episode is probably going to be an episode that A, you don't want to listen to if you listen in the car with kids or with kids around. And B, I will not be answering any hate-filled comments if you comment. I want people to understand how my perspective changed and your perspective doesn't necessarily. And I also think that if we want to have a grown-up conversation about said topics, that we need to understand that we are all beautifully and wonderfully made by God and that we need to be charitable towards each other and that disagreement doesn't always have to equal hate. So with that being said, if today's episode has blessed you in any way, shape, or form, 
please like, share, subscribe. Go and find me on Facebook at stand, comma, Neil, comma, now what with the question mark podcast. Or I can also be found on Instagram at stand underscore Neil underscore now underscore what. I would love to see you there. That is where all the polls for the week are. Plus they're on Spotify. So go ahead and like, share, subscribe, and I will be back next week.